Let's talk about ops, shall we? Operations, propaganda campaigns. Th this stuff matters because it affects all of us, you, me, all of us. We see these all around us. Sometimes we notice them, sometimes we don't notice them. And we're gonna bring this back to politics in a moment, the left, the right, how they handle them, how we handle them, but, but ops, operations. What's, what do these look like? Well, you ever seen an ad on television for Pizza Hut? Maybe they're advertising some new cheesy bread or something like that. And you're watching the football game and you see a cheesy bread ad and you think, ooh, ooh that looks good. And then maybe you're on, maybe you're online, Facebook or something, and you're looking and you, well, ooh, cheesy bread. Mm, that hey, honey, should we get Pizza Hut? That kind of thing ever happened to you? That's an op. Remember, they're not all, they're not all nefarious. They're not all wrong. That's Pizza Hut dedicating however much money, we'll call it a million dollars, to an ad campaign promoting their new cheese sticks so they can advertise it to you, beam it into your brain, and get you to do something. They want you to do something for them. Buy cheesy bread. They run the op. You get manipulated, even though you know you are. You'll know. Oh, wow, that ad really works. And you call and you order some cheesy bread from Pizza Hut. Don't know why you do that, but either way, that's an op. They're all around us. Ops are all around us. And we see them in politics all the time. The difference between politics and Pizza Hut is this, though. When you, or me, it happens to me all the time, when you fall for a Pizza Hut op, uh, I'll point to me, Little Caesars has a new thin crust pizza. I'm a big Little Caesars fan, and me and the boys got it the other day. It was fantastic, I should note. I knew I had an op run on me. I knew I had watched it in a TV commercial, and I knew it was advertising, and I knew they had done it, and, but I still ordered it anyway. But when it comes to politics, because it's more important, and because it means more to you, and it means more to me, oftentimes we can't recognize an op. When you get emotional about something, it's harder to see clearly, to think clearly. It's why you, me, we can't ever be honest about our kids, can we? You ask me about my sons, I tell you they're the best, sweetest, most polite, smartest young men in history. Of course they're not. They're wonderful young men, but in my eyes they are. I can't see clearly. I love them too much. Politics is this way. Now, recently, let's just discuss the most recent one, but this isn't about what happened recently. This is about how we think about everything else going forward. Recently, the right was running an op. What was the op? Haitian immigrants, foreigners in Springfield, Ohio, are eating people's pets. That's the op. You have seen something about it. You've heard something about it. Freaking Donald Trump brought it up the other night during the debate. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. So this is an op that has gained legs, ground. The former president of the United States is bringing it up on national television. And remember, just because it's an op, an, an operation by the right, that doesn't mean it's inaccurate. Uh, ops can be very accurate. Little Caesars told me their thin crust pizza was delicious, and they were correct. It was delicious. Ops, just because we use that word, doesn't mean it's nefarious and wrong. Horrible things are happening in Springfield, Ohio. We have all kinds of first-hand accounts. This was really the guy who introduced the whole they're eating the animals thing. They're in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head off and walking off with them and, and eating them like... They're cutting off the ducks' heads in the park? They're eating them? Seems bad, right? He's not the only one who said it. Okay, so from there, the right ran it up. We're upset about open borders. We're upset about unending immigration. We're very angry about what this evil government is doing to our country and our citizens. And we want to lay blame at the feet of the people who have earned that blame, Democrats. And so we're running an op against them so the American people will know it's their fault. Okay, that's, that's an op. We're running an op. It was a successful op. Trump's even talking about it. But let's discuss the left's response to an op versus our response to an op. You see, 
Not only did the moderators jump all over Trump during the debate to try to fact check him in real time. Well, we spoke to the city manager and no one said their dog was eating. Not only did the moderators do it, you've seen leftist after leftist, media person after politician after media person after politician immediately lock shields, stand shoulder to shoulder with each other and fight back against the right wing op. You had Eric Swalwell practically crying about cat memes on the house floor what in the hell is this the chairman tweets protect our ducks and kittens in ohio because he goes some down goes down some crazy rabbit hole completely debunked that aliens are eating pets my god are you okay mr chairman that's an op all right and that's how they responded to the op. Immediate, universal, universal locking of shields, fighting back against our op. I will ask you this. I've asked you this kind of thing before, but I'll ask you this. You consume this stuff all the time, same way I do. You understand politics and issues, and you're reading this and watching that. You do. Name me. You can send me an email. Name me. One left-wing pundit or politician who has taken part in the rights op. Name me one. Name me one person on TV, radio, maybe a, bi a big writer, maybe a congressman somewhere. Name me one who has said something even benign. Like, well, I mean, I... There are bad things happening in Springfield. We should acknowledge that as Democrats. Can you name me one? You can't because they don't exist, because there hasn't been one. And what is the end result of that? The end result of that is when the right runs an op and they immediately lock shields and dig their feet in, our op, oh, it can go far and it can go wide. It won't go near as far as it would have been because they, by playing defense, have blocked our momentum and the story will fade in the end. Now, look at the left's ops. They run them all the time. They're almost always despicable and awful. Look at the left. Look at the ops they run. Now, pick your op. It doesn't matter what it is. We could do COVID. We could do uh, the most recent Russian hoax thing. Right-wingers are, are, are being paid by Russia. We could, we could look at any of them. Look, look, look at George Floyd. Remember, maybe this is the best example of it. Remember when George Floyd, some scumbag drug dealer, died in Minneapolis? He died of an overdose. We know that. Medical examiner now. The left, though, watching this, realized they had an opportunity to run an op. What was that opportunity? Well, they hate America. They think it's an evil, racist place. They wanted to defund the police. They wanted to set criminals free so they could <laughs> people. The communists have always wanted that. They understood the death of George Floyd gave them that opportunity. And so they immediately launched an op. Media, Hollywood, politician after politician. George Floyd, say George Floyd, I love him. Ah! What did you see from the right? How many right-wingers, politicians and pundits, did the Mitt Romney thing? Hey, Senator, why is it important for you to be out here today? We need a voice against racism. We need many voices against racism and against peace. brutality. We need the to stand peace. up and say that Black Lives Matter. The peace. It wasn't just Mitt Romney. So don't roll your eyes and say, well, of course, Mitt Romney. It was more than I can possibly count. You had Republican after Republican. Well, we do need a law enforcement roundtable. They dragged poor Tim Scott out there. Maybe we do need federal police reform. Right-winger after right-winger after right-winger took part in the left-wing op. Didn't lock shields, didn't dig in, took part in the left-wing op. How did that op go for them? An unbelievable success if you're a communist demon who wants to burn down America. American cities uninhabitable now, police departments emptying out white people being oppressed all over this system legally in this country. Sorry, no more white people. We only hire uh, uh, blacks and, and some. That was the result of their op, 
because we helped them do it. We can't win like this. We cannot win if we continue to take part in their ops and hold back our ops. And remember, this whole what's happening in Springfield, Ohio thing is happening all over the country, and it is an evil from the pit of hell. You are a taxpayer. The federal government, your own government, is taking your money. They're flying foreigners into your country, into your town with your money. They're giving them homes. They're giving them welfare. They're giving them jobs. While you can't afford eggs, the United States government is taking money from you and handing it to foreigners. Listen to this homeless advocate in Springfield, Ohio. You know, the homeless problem. I don't know of a single homeless Haitian in this town because they all got vouchers. But I can show you a whole bunch of people that have been displaced. They want you to come up with a solution to why they're displaced, why they lived in a house. I personally know, and I'll testify under oath, my hand to God, somebody that lost their house. They were there seven years. The landlord said, hey, I need you to move out, find a temporary place. I'm going to remodel it. And then you can come back. Thank you, Baron. Lie. They moved him out, tripled the rent. Thank you. Follow thank you for the speaking. money. And you're paying for it with the money the government steals from you. It's an op and an important one, and we should keep talking about it. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I am right. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is, and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.